Hi, welcome. Simon here and I hope you're doing well. In this video, I'll walk you through step by step on how to set up Ubiquiti Nano Station M5. I have two of them. For the project, you definitely need to have two of this Nano Station M5 because the A would be sending signal to the B and that is what you're trying to do. So you need to have two of this uh, to get this set up. All right, so let me show you the box here. So if you look at the side of it, it says NSM5. That stands for Nano Station M5. That's the back of it. Liquidity, that's how it looks like. It is still brand new in a box. And let's go ahead and open it up. I need to find a scissors to open up the plastic in the box you're gonna see that device itself a power cable POE injector adapter. So this adapter here provides power directly to the device. Zip ties and the manual instruction on how to quick set up. You can follow along with the manual or continue watching my video and I'll show it to you how to set it up. Okay, so the next step I like to do is to give you a bit of an explanation. What is the purpose of setting this up? So um, here, let me kind of quickly draw you a diagram on what we are trying to achieve here. So assuming that you have your internet service provider, so I'm going to say ISP, that stands for internet service provider, the one that you pay monthly service for your internet so this internet service provider giving you an internet to your home let's just say this is your nice little house here okay so it's giving you internet into your into your home okay so what you want to do is we're going to call this as a all right in a home you're trying to send a signal wirelessly to let's just say a cottage or maybe a barn or maybe a warehouse somewhere far away from your home that is hard for you to catch a wireless signal coming from the home router but then you want to have internet coming off from this B building so I'm just gonna call this as uh, a barn so a barn I'm not sure how to draw. I'm just going to make a smaller cottage building here. I'm going to call it as B building. Okay. So B building here uh, needs to have the Wi-Fi signal. So what you want to do is the goal is to able to send. Right. Signal from A to B building. Okay. So here we are going to have the B. I'm going to label this as a B, all right? I'm going to call this station. And then here we have a little house, which is B, okay? Now, here we have the A.
we are going to call this as access point. So all short form for AP, access point, AP, and we're going to call this going to make a little house here. And we're going to say A, right? So A is sending signal to the B. Okay, so let me make the A a little bit bigger. Um, let's see what else I need to explain to you. So A is the access point, right? B is call station. And that's how they're going to communicate. Now, just going to fast forward to you. And when A sending the signal and B receiving the signal, here as the B station, as you can see that here um, in the uh, the back of this clipper. So once you open up the clipper, you can slide this connector down. And when you slide the connector down, you can see there's a main and a secondary. So what that means is the main is the one that coming off the power, the PoE injector here, powering up the main. And then the secondary comes out which you can connect it to your choice, maybe a switch. So from the secondary, right? So this is the main, if I can explain it. So this is the ubiquity uh, station thing. Underneath here, you can see that you have the main and secondary right so here the secondary port what you can do is you can either connect it to a router or switch network switch so what it does is i'm just going to fast forward here a little bit for you so when you connect the secondary over to a router, let's just say your router is on this part here. We're going to draw a little router here with this three little Wi-Fi. So if you connect the secondary to the router, so all this here, it will be still under in the B unit, right? In the station unit. So when you're connected to this, the router would be broadcasting. So this router right here. Okay. So this router in the B unit will be broadcasting Wi-Fi around the house, around the cottage. So you'll be getting internet coming from this router, but the ubiquity is talking to the A access point, right? So this U ubiquity B station is talking to the A. This does not provide Wi-Fi. Do not think about this ubiquity is shooting Wi-Fi around the B house. It's not going to happen. You need to have the secondary here comes in as a router to broadcast Wi-Fi. All right, so kind of a little explanation here. Uh, I think we should jump into the real practice. At least you get an idea. Okay, let's kind of move on to the next process. So the first thing I like to do is to go ahead and power up the access point, right? So we need to make sure you get everything connected. Plug it in here. We need to have an internet cable. I uh, will be using this little gray cable. What you need to have is to plug it in into the main, right? So the main goes in here. Okay. And this is going to go to the POE. All right. The main always goes to the POE because this is the injector that powers up the device. And go ahead and connect yourself to the internet, uh, to the power. 
I think I might be too short. Ah. Yeah. All right, so I have the Okay, now we have power here now. Sorry about that. I hasn't power up the stuff. All right, so A is powering on. Now here, let's get set up for the B. And now do you remember where should I connect the B? You'll be connecting the POE, right? Into which one again? Remember, it will be going to the main. This is where we need to power up the station, right? Okay, so the yellow is for the B. Remember that it goes to the main. into the poe now we are going to configure the a first okay i'm just powering up the b but i'm not configuring the b yet all right so the b is going to be pushed on the side here but into the corner my tiny little table here so let's just push it all the way over there now here comes my a Okay, so this is my A. Okay, my little A access point. The thing is powered. You can see there's a little power right here. The LAN 1, LAN 2 has no lights, and there's no light at all in this bar, which is good because we haven't configured yet. Okay, now. What I need to do is I need to get an additional one more Ethernet cable here. So this is my Ethernet cable, right? So I'm going to connect to the LAN. You see this LAN port? Connect the LAN port. Okay. And then the second of this LAN port is to go into your computer. All right. So um, you can do it in your laptop or you can do it directly in your desktop so you need to use a computer to configure the settings i i'll be using a windows in this project um but i'll try to explain to you a little bit on a mac if you're using an apple product okay but i wouldn't be able to show it to you um in the mac because i'm recording this in um you know windows all right that's being said so let me let me show you this little here okay so this one is my computer connector i know it is hard for me to film my desktop um, so i make an extension here so this is my extension coming from the desktop and i'll be connecting into the the, the desktop right so what you have to do is just connect connect straight into your computer the laptop or straight into your desktop okay so uh, assuming this is my desktop port in the back of my computer so now once you're connected you can see the light is flashing now i'm going to show you the second screen here okay i'm going to share screen with you so that you can um you can see what's happening on my screen How do I do that? Okay, so hopefully you can still see it. Uh, I'm going to share my screen with you right now. And I'll be opening up my here. All right, so now you can see it, right? Hey, I'm still here. Okay, so here's the screen, right? So what you want to do is 
you want to go ahead and open up a browser. You can do it on a Chrome or you can do it on your choice, Microsoft Edge or Firefox. Any of the browser, let's go ahead and open it up. So the browser is ready, but you need to do one thing here. So one thing you need to do is first, you actually need to go to your control panel. Now I'm going to show you to you how to go to control panel, click this little start here and then type in control panel. You see that control panel? Go to your control panel. Here in the control panel, what you want to do is click on network and internet. Go to network and sharing center. And here, under Ethernet 2, mine is 2, yours could be 1, could be 3, could be 4, 5, any number, it doesn't matter. Just click on this for now. And this little screen pops up. What you want to do is you want to give it a static IP address. So let's take a look here. The number is 169.254.218.201. You see that? auto configuration IPv4, that is not the IP that we, we want. Okay, so we want to change the IP address. So what you want to do is you want to click on properties. Go to this internet protocol version 4, TCP IP4, double click that. Okay, instead, instead of obtaining IP address automatically, we are going to assign an IP address for this purpose. I believe the menu says 192.168.1, maybe .20.1. Uh, let me double check. Sorry, I haven't done this in a while. So I got a lot of requests coming from you guys the viewer thank you for watch watching my channel and um they just want an update version of it so i'm just making another uh setup process here and show it to you guys all right so here it shows 192.168.1.20 i'm not sure if you can see it but that's the uh the ip address that it wants all right so it might come in handy what else does it say UBNT, that's the login. Okay, I think that's enough of reading. All right, so I'm going to come back here and change it to 1. Here, I'm going to put 21. Why do I put 21 at the end? Because number 20 belongs to the access point on this device, right? Subnet mass is going to be 255, 255, 2550. The default gateway, you can put 192.168.1.1. Doesn't matter. Okay. Just put .1.1. .1. DNS, leave it blank. Alternate DNS, leave it blank. Click yourself OK. Click OK again. And close it. Close the control panel. We are back onto the browser. Here, what we need to do is to go ahead and type it in 192.168.1.20. Right? Do you remember the 20 belongs to the access point? Correct? So now we have filled in the top URL here and we're going to hit enter. It will bring you to this connection that says your connection is not private. What what are you going to do? So you're going to click ad, advance and you want to continue with that 192.168.1.20. Now it bring you to this, this ubiquity uh, setup system. Let me see if I can make the screen larger for you. So you can see it better. All right. 125 I think that should be good you have to agree make sure you agree and to the terms of use now remember the username by default is UBNT 
password is UBNT. That's the default for the system, okay? Now select the country. I'll be selecting United States and I click login. All right, so right now here it brings you to the dashboard. First thing first, you know, you might want to click on system. And here you want to give it a device name. I'll be naming this as building. I'm going to name it as a building. Okay. A building. All right. I just name it as a building time zone. I'm in Hawaii. So I'll be selecting Hawaii depending on your location. Username. You can leave it default as UBNT or you can change it yourself. It doesn't matter. Up to you. That's your choice. Okay. We're going to dismiss. You're using a default administrator password. Please change in a system page. I'm going to click di dismiss. Oops. I don't think you can see that page here. Uh, let me see what I can do. Maybe I just minimize a little bit. Okay, push it up. You see that this default message right here, you can just click dismiss. All right, so here, uh, let's go ahead and do it this way. So at least you can see uh, some of my screen here. Okay, now um, the next step is you want to change the password or not is your choice. But I'm not changing the password. I'm just going to name it as a building for this device and give it a time zone of Hawaii. Now, next step I like to do is to click on wireless. Here under wireless mode, you want to change it to access point. You see this access point listed here on the device. We are selecting this as the access point. Now you want to give it a name on the access point so that you can broadcast uh, the Wi-Fi. So let's give it a name. I'll be naming this as, let's give it a name, okay? My SSID, I'm just going to name this as, um, Hello. Okay. Capital H E L L O. Hello. So you can leave the country code default. This mode here is default channel width. Um, I'm going to go with the 20 megahertz. You can leave it as the default for 40 megahertz. Meaning that what this is, is you can read channel spectrum width. Okay. So channel spectrum width can be used to control the channel width consumed by your link. Using a higher channel width will increase throughput. Using a lower channel width would allow an increased number of channel to be used, including more non overlapping channels. Lowering channel width may also provide more robust link over long distance. All right. So what that means is if you select 40 megahertz, meaning that um, you get a shorter distance. But if you're selecting 20 megahertz, you get a longer range. So if your A is far away from the B, you may want to select 20 megahertz. If your distance is close, you may want to change it to 40 megahertz. Now, how do you define this, the distance? There's no right or wrong answer. There's no rule of thumb here. I would say if 
your A building, let's just say that your A building here, okay, and you're trying to shoot a signal maybe over 50 feet. Is that far enough, right? So if you're going to shoot over 50 feet, and in this 50 feet, and if you have a clear sight, meaning that obviously if you, let me switch it back here. If you have, if you're A shooting using, um, let's just say 20 megahertz, okay? This is the 50 feet to B. And if you have a clear sight without any tree in between, there's no trees, right? Trees, um, or maybe water or lake or pond, whatever that is, then you might want to consider using 40. Okay, I'm using a 50 feet length distance. If you are 50 feet, a to B and you have trees and then the distance is not straight line maybe the B is somewhere here right you you would have to you know go through all the trees and shooting the signal then you might want to consider using a 20 megahertz does that make sense all right so I'll let you make your own judgment on this I can't really tell where you're located, if you have any, uh, you know, a clear sight view, or if you have trees, uh, stuff like that, you know, I'll let you decide. Now, 50 feet, I know is quite far away. Mostly, none of us would live, have a house 50 feet apart. I'm talking about maybe if you have 20 feet away, 15 feet away, all right, 20 feet away. 15 feet away let's go ahead and set it up as 40 megahertz all right anything above 20 just go with the 20 megahertz all right that's my assumption on the distance let me switch you back to the monitor screen here all right let's go on to the next one frequency here we're going to be auto antenna built in it's going to be by default here the dbm i'm not sure what it stands for maybe the decimal decibel radio frequency things like that um, i believe the output is the power of shooting the distance right so uh, is the amount of the power shooting out from the access point um, if it's a short distance like i said 20 megahertz you might want to reduce down a little bit so 26 is the highest i'm just going to put it to 13 let's do a 50 percent reduce all right um the rest of it you can read it by default here the wireless security what you want to do is you want to select wpa2 make sure you do a wpa2 and here we're going to uh, set a password. We're going to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. We're going to click change. All right. It doesn't allow me to use the default password UBNT. New password I'll be using UBNT. UBNT. I'm just using the default. Oh, it doesn't allow me to do that. One, one. Okay, I'll be using UBNT1, UBNT1, change. That was the system login password, okay? Um, it didn't pop up earlier, but it just did. So just click change for now. Uh, we are back to this settings. Remember, access point for this, okay? And then we have hello for the SSID. And then we have the... Um, wireless password which is one two three four five six seven eight nine now let's go to network network mode is going to be bridge all right so we are going to bridge over from a to b so leave it as default now here under management network settings it's kind of tricky every one of us have a different IP address, right? If you have a router that might be 192.168.1.1, .1 .1, 
most of the net gears are dot one dot one some of the tp link are 192.168.100.1 uh, some of them are like 192.168.10.1 so this ip address related to your router you need to find out what is your router ip address everyone has a different ip address okay for my purpose instead of setting as a static right for the sake of the video i'm not sure where you're from you could be from europe from asia from north america from africa i don't know then you might be using a different ip address so i'm in united states i think the best is to do it as dhcp let the router assign you an ip address okay so if you do a if you know much about the router you can do a static this is the only way for you to gain access back to your your, your ubiquity access point now if you're not too sure just click dhcp for now okay ipv6 enabled is fine using this is all default is fine dhcp fallback ip address by default is that it's fine it's fine it's fine it's fine all this the default the only thing i changed was from static to dhcp i click change all right so that is done let's click on advance do we need to know all this thing the answer is no let's just leave it default it's pretty easy right auto adjust the distance advanced wireless settings you know go by miles go by kilometer 0 0.4 miles is far away all right that's why they push all the way to the bottom here but if you want to crank it up crank it up crank it up we can go all the way up to 32 miles that is about 52 kilometers really far to broadcast the wi-fi we don't need that far right so we're just going to push it all the way back down here it was 0 0.4 we'll leave it as the default settings okay services leave it as default we don't have to go through all this you might want to get technical about the web server open up your port ssh server if you have a telenet server i'm not sure who uses telenet anymore this is really old system uh dynamic dns if you have a server on a unit uh, building b you might want to configure some of this but for most of you guys default all right so let's recap what did we change we changed system we named this as oops uh what do we got a building right a building we're gonna change this to hawaii right i forgot to click the change earlier so a building hawaii username is ubnt my password is ubnt one because you can use the same password and just click change okay so we're going to name the device a building uh, that's what we did here system and then we go to wireless we change this to access point give it an id right and then i select the 20 megahertz for my reason uh, but you can do 40 doesn't matter or 30 or 10 it's up to you uh, here I reduce from 26 to 13 and I should set up a password using the WPA2. Got it? All right, under network, we leave it all the default as a bridge. And under management IP address, we set up as DHCP. For the purpose of the video, it just, I'm not sure what is your IP address at home, your router, right? All right, so once it's all done, all you have to do is click apply and that's it that's all it takes we are done setting up the a access point all right so right now the a is rebooting okay the lights are flashing and it's putting all the configuration into its brain right now so this thing is setting up itself all right so what are we doing now is going to move on to b unit 
Okay, so here is the A. I'm just going to disconnect this cable. Remember, this is my desktop connector. Let me make it bigger for you. Okay, remember, this is my desktop connector, right? Oh, the thing just changed. Uh, okay, so this is my desktop connector, right? This is the power for the access point. So I'm done with this. So now I need to configure the B. Okay, here's my B. What I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect the LAN, right? Because I still need this being connected to my desktop, right? This cable here is going to go into the yellow B, all right? So the B LAN is going to go in there. Let's go in. Okay, it's in. So A with this one here, I'll be still putting on the side. At least you guys can see it. Uh, nothing has changed here. So this is the desktop. Again, the Ethernet. You need to connect that. Going to the B. So B is here. This is my B, right? And then the B yellow is connected to the main. And now we're going to do the configuration. Okay, let's go to the configuration. Let me switch the screen here. Bringing you back to my Microsoft Edge. Okay, so what's next is, remember, we need to go back to, well, I'll be, I'm using the same computer here, right? I assume that you're using the same computer too. So if you're not, meaning that you have to go to control panel to do that configuration. Remember control panel, network, internet, network and sharing center. Click on this little internet two, right? And then here you go to properties and double click the TCP IP version four. And here we give it the IP address. Remember, we did this for the access point. So we got, I'm using the same computer. So I leave the setting as this. Okay, nothing is changed. Now we're going to go back to the browser. In here, browser, I'm going to type in 192.168.1.20. Okay, now this is the new device for the B. So we're going to again click on advance and continue. And you're going to bring you to that same screen, the setup screen. We're going to agree to the terms and we're going to put in the UBNT. UBNT as the password here. Okay. And I'll be selecting United States and click login. Remember the first thing first, it would ask you to change the password. So let's go ahead and change the password before this annoying thing pops up. How did it pop up? Where, where's the password? Mm -hmm. All right, so this is little change password right here, this little keypad right here. So go to system and then click on that little key icon here. And the username is UBNT. The current password is UBNT. New password is UBNT1. I just want to make it simple, right? And this is for the tutorial. You should change it to any password you like, but I would recommend follow along the video until you get it correct, set up, then you change it to your fancy password. Uh, don't worry. I'm not sure where you live, where you are is almost impossible for me to hack into your system. So follow my password, right? Until you figure this out, until the thing is set up and working, then you can go back and change any password you like. All right, so I'm going to name this as B building. All right, remember this is the B building here. Change it to Hawaii. And I'm going to click change icon here at the bottom right corner. Click change. All right. Configuration change. Apply these settings. Not yet because we need to do some configuration. 
So let's click on wireless. Remember the wireless mode for this, I name it as station. Okay. So this is the station, not the access point because the A is the access point. B is the station. All right. Now, what we're going to do is remember the SSID on A because B is receiving the signal, right? A is shooting the signal. B is receiving the signal. And remember the ID is hello. That is my ID. Well, you see this little button here. It says select. You would have a little pop up here and the B is scanning the entire neighborhood. Right now, you can see my entire neighborhood Wi-Fi. A bunch of them, right? So here under SSID, you can see we have this neighbor here. We have that neighbor. We have this neighbor. We have a lot of neighbor right here. And voila, we have the A building. You see this A building right here, right? So we have the A building. The SSID, right? This is all the SSID. It says hello. And then remember the device name that we give it a name. And it says A building. This is what we want because this is the Amex. Amex is the Nano Station M5, right? So it runs on the Amex. Great. We found it. We're going to select this little button right here. Check that button. And we are going to select click select and automatically it would select it for you as hello right now the channel width leave it as auto 20 or 40 now if you change it to 30 you need to match the 30 on your a if you change the a to 10 then you need to match the 10 on your a got it now automatic is 20 or 40 I select the 20 on my access point, the A. So I'm just going to leave it as auto. If you leave it as 40 on your A, you can just leave it as auto. Okay. Let's move on. Now here, remember, we reduce down to 13. So stay as 13. Like to be in the middle. Not to be biased. 50, 50. <laughs> All right. Security, WPA2. That's what we want. And remember the password for this. What is the password for this? Remember that it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That's my password. All right. So you need to configure the B, understanding that the A Wi Fi is hello, and then the A password is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay. So that's what we need to do and click change. Always make sure you click on the change. All right. So once you click on the change, let's recap the network. The network is bridge. That's fine. That's what we want. We do not want to select the router, which you may can. I'm not 100% sure. You know what? Let me try it out in the router section next time and if it works what i expected it to work then i'll make a separate video for you uh, as for now we're going to do it as a bridge all right i wonder the router is something like this remember this this thing i was talking about the b right and then the secondary slot you need to have a router if you want to broadcast a wi-fi here so i wonder if the b network instead of the bridge mode if i select the router uh, maybe that way would help i'm not 100 percent sure but i'll make a separate video for that now here under network we're going to select dhcp for that same reason we're going to click change okay that's all we need for now nothing else and we click apply all right so this b is going through its cycles it's going to turn off and turn on and input all the settings that we just did on the B. Now, what we want to do, we are done configuring the computer. We are done configuring the A and B. Now, we need to change the computer settings. 
remember the control panel. Right under control panel, go to network and sharing center. Click on that Ethernet tool. Whatever the Ethernet is, go to properties. Now under version 4, TCP IP, double click that. You want to change your computer back to obtain IP address automatically. Change it back to obtain DNS server address automatically. Okay. Because if you have the IP address that was set up earlier, you might not even get the internet. Right? Because we are just setting up on the Ubiquiti. So you want to change it back to automatic. Let your router do the work and give you an IP address to your computer. Go ahead and select OK. OK. Close it and close it. We are done with the computer. Revert back to the settings. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to switch the screen because we want to show you to you the setup. OK, remember, so this is the computer, right? So we are done with this one. We're going to unplug this. I do not need to connect to my computer anymore. And I'm going to disconnect this as well. So this little orange cable here, the do auto configuration is all done. So let's put this on the side. We do not need that. Here we still have the B being set up here. And we still have the A being set up over here. Now, what we want to have is we want to have the internet coming in, right? So the internet provider shooting out the A to your B. So where does the internet going into? Into the LAN. Okay. So here is my internet cable. So this comes from my router. So here, A. I, the internet service provider here is is in the house right is coming into the house and in the house here I have a router okay in the router I have one cable coming in and going to the LAN port okay into the access point LAN port so my internet provider, internet coming from the router, this is the A, again, A, okay? Again, this is A, right? You can see this is A. You want to connect it to your LAN, okay? So go ahead and connect it to your LAN. So you see how it works? The internet coming in to this cable right here, giving into the injector, the power, and then the internet carry over to this gray line, right? To this gray line. I know this, these two are gray, but this is slightly white. To this darker gray into the access point, all right? So this ubiquity is getting internet coming from this internet provider. And this internet right here is sending signal, is shooting the signal, right? So as you can see, now we have the lighting here is on. You see the LAN one is green. I know it's hard for you to see. And you can see all this red, orange, and green. So it's shooting signal over. So the A is shooting signal now into the B. All right, so B here is receiving the signal. You can see that the signal is all in, coming in. So B has the signal. Now, how are you going to test? Now, let's, say, let's just say that you set up the A. The A is all done, right? You have the internet coming to the injector. The, the A is shooting the Wi-Fi. Now, you're here. You're still here in the A. You're going to walk over, right? You're going to carry the B with you, right? You're going to walk over, carry the B with you all the way to your cottage or maybe your barn or, or whatever right so you can disconnect the b so unplug it unplug the power everything because it's already configured now you walk over carry your little b device over to the house now you plug it in right it powers on get the lighting right the b is talking to the a now how do you get the internet what you want to do is 
you want to go ahead there are two ways you can get internet you can get internet from the injector or you can get internet from the secondary whichever you like so here i can show it to you i can plug it into the secondary okay plug it in into my secondary and then here i'll be plugging it into my computer remember this is my desktop computer i'll be carrying my desktop over right so be walking to the barn plug it in and do i have internet so let's go back here and let me see if i have internet here i'll switch my monitor so do i have internet i hope i have internet so let's google let's go to google yes i do have internet you can see that the internet is coming in and there you have it all right so we have internet and maybe let's do a speed test and run tests okay so there you have it the internet is running it's working just fine now if you're curious to know what is your ip address or you want to see the signal um you need to check with the router because we assign as the dhcp remember we assign the dhcp and the dhcp would probably give you a different ip address by now okay so the ubiquity you you won't be able to see it all right so now here we have the result of course i'm not showing the exact ping here probably pinging to california or maybe new york uh, east coast but yeah so close it i just wanted to show you we have internet now once you have internet coming in so let me switch it back okay so i was explaining to you you can either plug it in like this coming from the secondary so now what happens is a right a the internet here is giving the internet running through this cable into this injector right here and this injector right here carries to your a right and the a shooting the wi-fi and the b is receiving the wi-fi okay and then the poe is powering up the b and then the secondary is connecting to my computer now if you want to have wi-fi in the b what did i say you can connect the blue cable here into your router right so get yourself a new router plug it in and there you have your router on the b now you can also let's just say you do not want to stick it into let's just say that you do not want to connect from the secondary what can you do you can actually connect to the LAN okay you connect you can connect to the LAN and the LAN can connect to your desktop if you prefer right you can connect to your desktop for the internet you see the light is flashing okay now you would have internet or you can connect this to your router it's just that simple all right so what i'll do is i'll link um the description below where you can buy the parts from either from amazon or from um mostly from amazon okay and if you have any question do not forget to um comment below let me know what do you have um if you find the video is helpful please give me a like a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't um, any question regarding about the setup give me a call I, I i have a business so if you wanted to talk to me in person you can actually call me up uh, my phone number here the business is 808-236-4335 okay now um other than that i hope you have a great success um, until next time, bye now.